Sasha. Can I close this? Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, I'm just so happy to be here. Um, this weather, you know, it never rains when I'm here. Uh, so this is great. Um, NARAL is such a good organization. Um, at one point, before I went to the White House, I was the, then the president was the volunteer elected. Uh, so I was the volunteer president of NARAL and have been so connected with it and so fond of it ever since. Nancy Keenan is such a good representative of our organization. And now as the head in Washington, I think is a leader for all of us and many, many others to follow. Uh, she is doing some of the best work in looking at McCain, his record, trying to make that information available. And I just can't say enough wonderful things about her and the organization. And then, of course, Karen Cooper, who is, I mean, Karen, I'm so glad to see her because since I am celebrating the 35th anniversary of Roe and she's been here 16 years, she's like, like the younger group to me. <laughs> um, but she is wonderful. kinds of people. Lou Pritchard, some of you may know, is a lawyer here in town and on the Planned Parenthood board. Couldn't be here today, so he let me have the market apartment that he and his wife own, uh, which is great because I wake up in the morning to the sounds of the garbage collectors collecting the garbage. But on Texas time, it's just right because <laughs> there's two hours difference. And then getting to go across to the market and enjoy so much of Seattle that's great. Um, to see so many people I'm so fond of. Uh, Lisa Moore, who's a young attorney who helps me with transportation. I've known her for I don't know how long, but she can always pick me out at the airport, whatever my hair color is. Uh, and actually, it's been the same. It's the length that, you know, I had no hair during cancer, more hair now. <laughs> she always can find me. Um, or uh, Judith Lonquist, whom I've worked with for years, another lawyer. Uh, we are getting ready, both of us, to go to New York soon to be honored by the Veteran Feminist Association. Um, I was telling Judith earlier, I'm just so glad they're not calling it the old lady feminist. Um, but certainly there's so many of you that through these years I've worked with, enjoyed doing things with, and Susan Painter is one of those. Um, I don't know when you first called me for an interview. Yeah, did they have phones then, she says. I think that's, uh, yeah, it trains runneth not to the contrary. Um, Susan has been such a bright light, and so I've, I have quoted her columns so many times in speeches. I hope she will keep writing so I can keep quoting. Uh, she has been wonderful for so long. And then, by the way, uh, I'm from Texas. I've never heard of a Wang Dang Do. Uh, so I'm going to have to ask her what that is so I can quote her on that. And then, of course, the elected officials. Um, there are so many people I would love to call to your attention. But I have sat in so many offices begging for people to pay attention to the issues that we share. And to have someone in that office who is receptive, who is leading, who is on our side, who is helping to plan strategy, there is nothing more important, especially this year, than the elected officials who are here with us. And while we've clapped for them as they stood, I just think we should do one more really good clap for them because they're going to be in session, they're going to be campaigning, they're going to hear from people who don't agree with us, who are not where we are, and I want them when they meet those people to hear us and our class. Thank you. Magazine called me five years ago and they said we're doing this oh by the way we have promised you you'll be out at 1 30 
So let me tell you, I'll be true to that. And because I met you last night, I'm gonna take your lead, okay? Here's what I need. After I've been speaking for 10 minutes, give me that. 20 minutes, that. 25 minutes, you're through, okay? <laughs> All right. <laughs> we have an elected official watching your back. <laughs> Because I, I so appreciate your coming and I want to be true to what was represented and so that you'll come again next year. Um, I was trying to think if I should deduct from what, I, from what I've already said. So maybe <laughs> you decide it. But anyway, be sure and give time for them to close up and everybody to get out. Okay. Um, I look back at that five years ago. I got a call from Time Magazine. And Time Magazine said, we are doing a special feature of Time Magazine called 80 Days That Changed the World. It's our 80th birthday, and this is the way we want to celebrate. And they said, we really believe the day Roe versus Wade was decided in 1973 was one of the days that changed the world. Would you write the piece? Now, I'm an English and speech secondary education major, so of course I'd be happy to write that piece. Started really working hard on it, and thought I had it just about finished, and I got a call from Time Magazine. And they said, we're hearing that the um, war in Iraq is going to start on the very same day. So we're going to have to cut back all the issues if, in fact, that happens. And so I was thinking about how to cut it, and they called back and they said the war is going to start. All you get is this much at the bottom of a page. Now you know writing a perfect piece is not as hard as cutting it to that much on the bottom of a page. So I was struggling with how do I do that and still get the message across. And I was sitting on a plane, as I often do, and a flight attendant, I was sitting on the aisle, and so I had my button, you know the ones we've always worn, with the coat hanger in the middle, and the circle and the slash across it. And the flight attendant would come down the aisle, and she would stop and look at that button, and go on, and she would circle around, and she would come back and look at my button. And about the fourth time she did that, she stopped, and she said, what do you have against coat hangers? <laughs> Here is the outside of that Time Magazine piece, late March 2003. Here is the, piece, the, the cover that was planned, which became an inside cover, 80 Days That Changed the World. And down at the bottom of one of the pages is this article with the button. <laughs> but I, thank you. I went back in thinking about this speech and was looking at the other women. Of the 80 days that changed the world, according to Time Magazine, there were 10 that involved women. I don't have time for all of them, but I want to tell you a few of them, or remind you, because many of you would remember. 1950, uh, 1951, they said, was the first day when a woman changed the world. It was Lucille Ball first appeared on I Love Lucy. Now, that wasn't what came to my mind first. <laughs> but they said first, she knew to keep the syndication rights. So she became very wealthy. And second, she was the first woman who exhibited an ability to use humor. And that is important. Humor keeps us going so often. 1955, Rosa Parks. You know, she passed away recently. But you think of that woman sitting toward the front of the bus, told to go to the back, who refused to move. And it reminds me that sometimes it is small things that, that have rever reverberations that lead to so many big things. Rosa Parks. 1959, Mary Lakey and the Origins of the Human Species. May 1960, The Pill with Margaret Sanger. <laughs> 